Hawaii is great because I've lived out there for 15 years. You know, I was stationed out there. I ran, I ran a practice out there. So while I'm flying out there, it isn't really that much of a home court of age for the government when I've been out there for 10, 15 years. I know that island very well. I know you know a lot about the culture. You can name the bars that are out there that service members get in trouble at. I'm going to know where those are at. And, and that doesn't really change all that much. And at the same time, you might want someone who is an outsider. And what I mean by that is you might not want to hire the former military judge who's been a military judge on the island for the last five to 10 years, who's been doing nothing but putting people in prison and sentencing them. You really want that individual or a law firm that offers that when it might be better to have an outsider. Do you want a law firm where the members of the law firm are still in the reserves? And that's out there, right? Um, and if you're still a member of the reserves or you're a former military judge and you made your career putting people in prison, is that really the right person for the job when on the first and 15th, they're getting a paycheck from the same organization that they've got to go after? You know, is there a, I'm not saying it's a conflict of interest, but it goes to their mindset. Is that really the fighter or, or the trial warrior you want who, oh, by the way, I fight for justice. I fight against the system, this ridiculous UCMJ system. Oh, but by the way, every first and 15th, I still draw a paycheck from the people that run that same system. And I put on the same uniform and go drill uh, and go, maybe I'm a prosecutor or maybe I'm a judge or maybe I'm a, do an advisor for two weeks of the year. Is that really the person that you want on your defense team? So I think former military judges are problematic. I mean, they're great people, um, but they can be problematic because they didn't spend their time in the trenches. They were up on the bench. And it's like, you know, it's like sports. Do you want the you want to call, have the umpire, you know, come up to the bat and they're calling the game? Right. So do you want the umpire to be the one swinging the bat? You think about boxing or MMA. Do you want the individual who's calling the fight to be in the fight? You probably don't. They may be great at calling the fight. They may be great announcers or great at understanding the rules. But are they really the fighter? You want the person that's been in the ring uh, for the last 10, 20 years doing this, not the person who's been umpiring it. And just kind of an example. Another issue uh, with if you're looking at local council, do you really want someone who's never been in the military? Because there are local council at every installation, including out in Hawaii, which is kind of a unique area, and they take cases and they've never been in the military before. And so, yeah, you can say they're an outsider, uh, which they are, because they're, they're the, the ultimate outsider, I guess. But if you've never been in the military, you don't really have an understanding of what it's like to be in the military. You're not gonna speak the lingo. You may not even know the difference between a staff sergeant and a sergeant first class. Um, and you're not gonna understand you know, the military system, you may think you do, but if you haven't served in the military, you're not gonna understand the military. And I tell you what panel members, and in particular Marine panel members, once they realize that you haven't served in the military, it doesn't have to be the Marine Corps, but if you haven't served in the military, it's it's a definitely an uphill battle. So I think when you're looking at potential counsel, you want someone that served in the military, during their time in the military, they've done the vast majority of their time trying cases and winning cases for on the defense, not prosecutors, not judges, not chiefs of justice, not victims legal counsel, people that were in the trenches actually defending service members and winning. And then if they've gotten out, you want someone with a track record who's been doing this, you know, probably at least 10 years because there are all sorts of new law firms that come and go. I see it every year. I kind of track a lot of this. You'll see someone getting out of the JAG core, think they're going to go hang their law degree behind them, make a gajillion dollars off some service members back. And in six months or a year, year and a half, they realize, number one, they can't get clients. And when they do get clients, they can't win cases and they're out of business. So you don't want to be the guinea pig for these new attorneys coming out. And you can often see that by very, very low fees because they're desperate to get cases to keep the office open. So you can see that as well. And that's often a red flag. And then finally, you want someone who has, again, I say this over and over and over, you want someone who has the ability to get on a plane, fly to a very distant location, be in potentially an austere environment where we don't have paralegals, we don't have a lot of support, and we you know, are definitely the away team and has a track record of winning as the away team. 